Hello all, another video about tools from Banggood. I hope will help you better navigate the choices on offer there. And these are all sent to me by Banggood. The bits to the right of the large T-square are bits I requested and are what we'll look at in this vid. The stuff to the left of the T-square, including the T-square itself, are all Vico branded tools, new to Banggood I believe, and these I'll look at in a part two video to follow soon. Two parts purely down to me preferring to produce sub 15 minute videos. Now as half the tools here are ones I didn't request, and those I did were ordered out of interest rather than need, I'll be giving away most of the tools you see here. There'll be one giveaway for some of the items in this video, and another when I release part 2. I'll cover what's to be given away from this video, and how to enter at the end of this vid. But let's have a look at the kit first, eh? Now you're probably thinking, Stu, another guardrail clamp. But listen, when I ordered this, it was under £10. At that price, I thought it deserved a look. Unlike the ratchet lever type I looked at in a previous video, this is an old school screw clamp type. Being a Mafel and Bosch guide rail user, I don't use these for rails, but on my workbench, which has an MFT style top with 20mm holes in a grid pattern. Sometimes when clamping on the bench, it's handy to have this type of clamp without the ratchet lever sticking out the side. Some of my frame clamp ups make them almost impossible to use. These straight up and down screw type are preferable in that instance. Pressure is good with these, and they're not really any slower to use than the ratchet. I find them pretty much doable with one hand too, something which is a nightmare with the ratchet type. As you can see here, it slots into my 40mm profile at the end of the bench with its 8mm slot. Dimensionally, the foot of the bar is the same as my Axminster and Bessie ratchet clamps, so I've no doubt it'll fit the Festool pattern guide rails no problem as well. Being so basic, there's very little to go wrong on these. A replacement wouldn't handle at some point perhaps? I've had a pair of these little hilty ones since the mid noughties and despite looking tatty after a hard life, they still work perfect. Other than length, very little difference between the two. I'm sure someone will say, better steel in the hilty though. Maybe, no way to tell just by looking at them. But I've clamped these banged ones down hard. They've been in use nearly every day for a couple of weeks and no hint of anything dubious. They just work. Available in these 160mm versions, as well as 200 and 300mm variants. Like I say, these were under a tenner when I ordered them. They're now 16 quid. If you're interested, my advice is to stick them in the Banggood wish list and check back now and again. Before long, they'll be sub £10 again, I've no doubt. Decent budget clamp, these. Now, this clamp I was excited to try. Not only is it a solid aluminium linear bench clamp, but it's branded Hong Dewey. Regulars will know I've generally been mighty impressed with the kit with that branding. So aside from a little tool kit with screws and the clamp itself, in the box you get two dog options. One is 19mm or 3 quarter inch, the other is 20mm for those with these MFT grid type benches. I'll be using the 20mm option. The underside of the clamp body has a T-slot for the dock. To stop it slopping about, you'll need to add a little screw. You'll find this in the little tool bag along with two spares. You'll also find a spare screw for the clamp feet, Allen key for the small dog screws and a Torx for the clamp foot screw. Getting the screw to fasten the dog in place is a bit tricky. It screws at a slight angle as it wedges against the dog. Once in there, it does hold the dog fast though. The top of the clamp body rotates. Lift up on it and rotate anti-clockwise, it comes off and we can have a look inside. There's two little indicator tabs around the edge, inside which is a spiral, like a thread. The pitch of which engages the racking teeth on the clamping bar, moving it in or out as you turn. Drop the lid on again using the locator tabs, turn and you're ready to go. I should say, it'll only come off if you lift and turn. Turning alone, it stays put. Beautifully simple, solid aluminium, very little to go wrong. Impressed so far. Those of you with some experience of using linear type clamps on such bench tops might have already foreseen an issue. I know I was worried about it as I set up for a clamping test. I'm using a Hongdui planing stop and a piece of white beach to clamp against. Screwing the clamp tight, you can tell it applies a good deal of pressure. I'll go easier at first, just block planing a little nub in away from the end of the large roundover in the beach. Lovely. Let's have a go with a number 4 plane. Didn't take long for the problem to show itself really did it? With just the dog locating the clamp, it wants to lift when you apply a lateral force, like in planing. I've put a couple of the stops from my other linear clamp set behind the beach. These sit a little higher and might help. They did a little, but the clamp is still lifting, this time creating a sort of juddering, making smooth planing with it impossible. This is one of my other linear clamps, again something I've reviewed in previous videos. These come with a star knob that attaches underneath. Without it, you can see it too will lift. Fit the star knob to the underside and it holds fast, even though I'm certain it can't apply as good clamping force as the shiny new Hongdui one. I'm able to plane away the previous gouges, left no problem with this setup. 
In fact, this is the setup I use most often when planing. Now the Hongdui does have the benefit of his little V foot for corners, but you know, it will still lift, so its usefulness is somewhat limited. One thing to mention is that if you've some distance to cover to reach the clamping point, rather than turn the top 50 times to get there, just lift the top off, move the clamping bar to position, then replace the top and turn to apply clamping pressure. This clamp could be vastly improved by drilling and tapping the aluminium dog for an M6 or M8 male star knob you can screw in underneath. This is such a huge oversight by Hong Dewey, I think. I mean, it's a piece of cake to fix, but it should have come with a fixing down option. No arguing that it's a beautifully made piece of kit, and I'm sure would last a lifetime, but it's on offer at the moment for £42. Its recommended retail price is over 60 That's just for the clamp, no stops. Sure, it feels like a 50, 60 quid tool in the hand, and it's an absolute jewel of a tool, to be honest, but I can't lie. If you want functional, linear bench clamps, and not so much bothered by aesthetic, Consider these new brand Festool clones instead. They're sold as a pair, come with stops and hold down knobs, and are half the price of this single Hong Dewey clamp. Been using them a year or so, and they're great. Far from the quality of manufacture of the Hong Dewey, but hey, they work. Let's see if this little beauty of a clamp fares any better. This is a new brand to Banggood called Ganway, and this is their hold down clamp. I have the 20mm dog hole version here, but it's also available for 19mm or 3 quarter inch holes. Like the last clamp, there's no messing about with materials here. It's all metal. Body, stem and cam lever are all aluminium, with a piece of spring steel that has a black anodized aluminium clamping foot at the end. Lift the cam to push the foot down. Pretty simple. At the time of doing this vid, these hold downs are selling for a little over £12 each. For the build quality, that strikes me as phenomenal value. A little known company called Festool has just released something very similar to these, in plastic, in a £250 plus MFT clamping set. Ouch. Like the last clamp test, I'm just going in at the extreme pretty much. Max clamping depth is said to be 60mm, and this piece of beach is 52mm. The stem is all the way through the dog hole, but not much poking through the underside of the bench. I'm really pulling on that, so not bad grip. There's more left on the cam though, so let's see if it can hold any better. That's a good deal of bite for a cam type clamp. Easier to twist out than pull straight out, but two of these would hold work fast for sure. The hold is possibly a little better with the ratchet clamp, but not much. And of course the ratchet clamp gives you more clamping height. But one huge advantage with the Ganway hold down is it's genuinely a one-handed clamp. Its hold I think could also be improved a little by sticking a piece of rubber on the clamping foot, doing away with the slip of the aluminium. One thing to note given the stem has a knurled surface, is it did mark the inside of the dog hole. My bench dog still fit tight in the hole, but this could be something to watch for. Over on the Hooked On Wood channel, the guy whose name I forget did some tests using the stem of this clamp to try and sand away at the dog hole to see if he could enlarge it. His results were negligible, seemed to have very little effect, so may not be an issue. But you know, that's what we do here. Have a good little look to see if something's worth a punt or could cause problems. So in terms of dog hole wear over the long term, I can't say. I have two important dog holes for my fence, which I avoid using for anything else, so I suppose that could be one approach. Use the hole down in holes you won't use for bench dogs for squaring. Aside from that, I think this is a gem of a clamp. It's very well made. Can't see why a pair of these wouldn't see you out a whole working life, really. If I were to keep it, I'd probably go with adding a piece of rubber to the foot, purely for grip. So yeah, decent. If you've wanted a one-handed hold down for your bench, I've no problems recommending these, I think. Last item to show in this part one video then are these push button retractable bench dogs. Again by Ganway, these are sold as a pair for around £15 currently, or a set of four for just over £22. A significant saving on the set of four, but given the build quality, even the pair price seems a bargain. An all metal construction, the dog stops rotate freely, and as you can see, push in and out. These would be most suitable for traditional carpentry benches with a front or tail vise, but absent one of those, they'll be fitted to my MFT type bench. Took me a while figuring out where best to put them, but I settled on the front left, central between an existing square of dog holes. I used the existing dog holes to find and mark the central positions. I'm going to use them as quick clamping stops, so then being positioned accurately to existing dog holes isn't really an issue. Obviously, take as much care as you need for your particular setup and end use. So the collar on the Ganway dogs is 30mm in diameter and about 1.5 to 2mm deep. I do this recess first, checking the depth for flush with the dog upside down. Happy, I can drill the through hole for the main body. This is 26mm. 
I don't have a single drill bit that's 26 mil, so I used a 25 mil and sanded the inside of the hole a bit until the dog could be persuaded through. Good thing about this is it gave me a nice tight fit. Not my neatest work to be honest, perhaps making a router template would be a better idea for cleaner holes, but these are perfectly functional for my needs so I'm happy. Once in, they're a pretty straightforward device. I love that I can just pop them up and get something clamped. As mentioned earlier, my linear clamps you see here need screwing down from underneath for best use, as do their stops. Now I needn't bother with the stops for the most part and just use these with the clamp. Ideal. As you'll have spotted, the pop-up dog is cut away, having a half round and a flat side fully rotatable. This is great for clamping corners or perhaps more unusual shapes. Another cool thing is, as they rotate, you can still make use of a standard dog or two to seat a piece of work as demonstrated here. I wasn't too sure at first, but I think these are a neat addition to the bench. I can already see uses for my preparations and assemblies. And as some of you may know, I'm a fan of accessories attached to the bench that can be retracted out of the way. Good little bits of kit. In a few days, I'll try and have the part 2 video up where I'll look at the Vico branded tools Banggood sent me. Also, as mentioned at the start, some of these tools will be given away to one of you lucky folks. So what am I giving away from this video and what do you do to win? The screw down guide rail clamp has seen a bit of use now, so not in perfect condition, so I think it's best I keep that. And the pop-up dogs are fitted to my bench, so I guess they're out as a prize. From this video then, I'll be giving away the Hongdui linear clamp and the great little Ganway hold down clamp. That's combined as one prize, winner takes all. This giveaway is open to UK mainland residents only, so sorry if that rules out friends from the Isles or overseas. To enter, you'll need to follow me on Instagram. This is purely as it gives a discreet means to supply a postal address for the winner. To be in with a chance of winning, under the appropriate Instagram post, which I'll link below, I want a woodworking related haiku. That's a short poem following the 575 syllable format. So first line 5 syllables, second line 7, etc. There's millions of haiku examples online, so go on, have a look and give it a go. Make it funny, beautiful, thoughtful, just plain rubbish, whatever. I've no criteria for choosing the winner, just whichever one catches my eye. I suppose you'll want an example. Uh, go on then. <clears throat> an old slab of wood, sawn, planed, hewn, reimagined. An old slab made good. There you go, simple as that. Got to be worth a go for a couple of prizes. Closing date for this giveaway will be Friday the 5th of November 2021. I recently passed 10,000 subs and over 1 million total views here on YouTube, which I find extraordinary, so it pleases me greatly to be able to offer such a giveaway and share some of the modest spoils with you guys. You'll find all the links to the items on Banggood below, as well as the Instagram link for the giveaway entries. Good luck if you enter, and as always, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching.